Have I finally found my desert island amp or amps? Well, maybe I have. Hey guys, it's John here from Sonic Drive Studio. Thank you so much for tuning in and I hope you're all doing great. I'm pretty excited today because in this video we're gonna demo and review these two awesome PV amps, the Invective 120 and the Invective MH Mini Head. If you're not familiar with the PV Invective amps, they were basically co-designed by PV and Misha Mansour from the band Periphery. They basically took all the things that they liked from the old PV5150 and 6505 amplifiers, but added a bunch of new stuff and improved the overall sound quality and functionality, making these amps a huge step up from the old designs. Truly modern amplifiers with modern features for the modern guitarist. So in this video, I'm gonna go over all the features that these amps have to offer, as well as demonstrate some sounds with various guitars. And I'm gonna start with this big brother, the PV Invective 120. The Invective 120 is, as the name suggests, a 120 watt amplifier with six 12AX7 tubes in the preamp section and four 6L6 tubes in the power section. And the amp has a ton of great and very useful features that we're gonna go over in this video. And one of those great features is the foot switch that you get when you buy this amp. Check this thing out, it's absolutely huge. This wonderful foot switch not only lets you switch the channels of the amplifier, but it also allows you to switch on or off things like the two effects loops, the noise gate, the built-in boost, and the master boost. And not only that, but this thing also allows you to store up to nine of your favorite presets. And that means that you can recall your favorite presets with all your favorite settings at the push of a button. Quite an impressive feature indeed. Okay, so now let's take a look at this amplifier and let's start with the clean channel. The clean channel on this amp is very pristine with a lot of headroom, so it's a very clean, clean channel. And it has a very flat sound, which is great because that means that you can make it work with a wide variety of guitars and pickups. And like the other channels, you've got access to a pre-gain control, a simple three-band EQ, a post-gain, and you can also tweak the sound even further with the master presence and resonance controls. And each channel also has an independent boost, but we'll talk about that feature in a minute. Let's now take a listen to the clean channel of this amplifier. And for this clip, I'm gonna use my Schecter SLS C1P guitar on the neck pickup. I also have my Laney Black Country Customs Secret Path Reverb pedal hooked up in the effects loop number one. And yes, this amplifier has two effect loops, both with a very pristine signal path. And the pedal is set to the plate reverb setting with some modulation going on. Also note that I'm powering the pedal via one of the nine volt DC power outputs on the back of the amplifier also a very unique and cool feature. And I'm running all the sound from this demo through the Ownhammer Workhorse Collection impulse responses from the Line 6 Marketplace, by the way, and all the exact IRs that I used will be noted during the musical segments. Let's go ahead and take a listen.
wow, that sounded pretty nice, right? Very clean and pristine indeed. Now, as I also mentioned, each channel has an independent boost available. And for the clean channel, that basically means that you can get some nice organic overdrive or crunch tones out of this channel as well, without even having to change channels. The boost has a drive and a tone control, and it can be enabled via the front panel or via the foot switch. And this feature makes the clean channel, or basically the entire amp, that much more versatile. So let's take a listen to how that sounds right now with my PRS SE Zach Myers guitar on the bridge position on the clean channel with the boost enabled for a sort of British crunch. Here we go. That sounded beautiful to my ears, and I guess that it proves that this amplifier is capable of so much more than just modern metal tones. Now let's take a look at the crunch and lead channels of this amplifier. As you can see, the crunch and lead channel feature a noise gate. The gate is situated in front of the preamp, so it's going to get rid of all that interference noise from your pickups, and unwanted noise from your hand when you're playing, stuff like that, and it's going to make your staccato metal playing that much more tight. The higher you set the threshold, the more tight and aggressive this noise gate gets. A very cool and very handy feature indeed, especially for high gain. This function can also be turned on or off via the front panel or on the foot switch as well. And then, as I just mentioned, we have the boost function that can be enabled for both the crunch and or lead channel. And this boost features a simple level and tone control. Now, very often what rock and metal players like to do with their amplifiers is place a boost pedal up front, like the Maxon OD-808 or an Ibanez Tube Screamer, and people basically use those pedals to make their amplifiers sound a bit more tight. So the boost function on these channels is designed to do exactly that without having to hook up an external pedal. And note that most players don't like to use the gain control on those pedals at all, because these amplifiers have plenty of gain already. So this boost function features a basic tone and level control, and I think we all know what those controls do. And you'll get to hear how the boost on these channels sounds in a minute. Now before we take a listen to the next clip, there's something I'd like to mention about the relationship between the post gain controls and the master volume control. Turning the post gain controls up gives the amp a darker sound overall, and when you turn them down and turn the master up more, the sound will become brighter and more open. I think this is a pretty cool feature actually, because it really allows you to fine tune the overall brightness or darkness of the amplifier. And as you will see in a minute, for the crunch and lead channels, I like to have my post gain controls turned up quite a bit, just to help smoothen out the top end a little bit. So do keep that in mind when you try this amplifier out. Okay, so now let's take a listen to the crunch channel with the boost turned off, with my ESP LTD Deluxe Phoenix 1000 guitar on the bridge pickup. And these will be some basic high gain rock tones. Let's go ahead and take a listen right now.
great, that sounded awesome indeed. So the crunch channel can work very well for mid to high gain tones, and it can also work very well for more modern high gain tones. And you can make it sound even more aggressive by turning on the built-in boost. So this channel alone is very versatile indeed. Now we'll get to the boosted tones in a minute, but first let's move on to the lead channel, the pure tones of the lead channel. And the lead channel is where all the magic is at for those high gain tones. Now, as I said, we're gonna check out the lead channel with the boost turned off first. And this will probably remind you of the old PV5150 or 6505 tones. Plenty of saturation and thickness going on there. And for this clip, I'm also gonna use my PRS SE Zach Myers guitar on the bridge pickup. Here we go. That sounded really nice. I really enjoyed those tones. And I definitely think that this proves that you don't need to use the boost for everything. It's a matter of taste really. However, now let's check out the lead channel with the boost enabled with some extended range and down tuned guitars. And for this clip, I will be using my ESP LTD SC607B1H guitar, the Stefan Carpenter seven string baritone model, the purple one with the Fishman Fluence Steph model in the bridge position, and that guitar is awesome. It's tuned to drop A, so it's tuned very low. Now let's go ahead and take a listen to how that sounds right now on the lead channel with the boost turned on. Here we go. Super nice and awesome tones. And I guess that this amplifier was kind of made with those sort of tones in mind. So it makes a lot of sense that this sounds absolutely awesome through this amplifier. It sounded huge, but the boost really helped to give the guitars more focus and clarity all across the spectrum. But now let's go even lower with my ESP LTD Steph eight string guitar, similar to the previous guitar, but obviously an eight string model this time. Also with the Fishman Fluence Steph models. And this guitar is tuned to F sharp standard, so pretty low indeed. Now let's go ahead and find out how well the lead channel with the boost turned on can handle those super low notes. Let's go ahead and check it out right now.
wow, that sounded really great. So this amplifier is just so well suited for extended range instruments with super low tunings and stuff like that. And the built-in boost just really helps with that. It just makes the guitar sound so much more tight and focused. So I can't stress enough how awesome it is to have that feature built in the actual amp. Now let's take a look at the back panel of the amplifier before we move on to the PV Invective MH. So this amp lets you choose between the full 120 watt rating or you can cut it in half to the 60 watt rating with the power scaling switch. And this will literally shut off two of the power valves. Keep in mind that you will need to change the settings of the impedance switch. Make sure it matches the cabinet that you're using. And this amp also features an MSDI direct output that you can send out to the PA or your DAW. So this is very useful if you want to quickly get a direct sound out of the amp without having to hook up a microphone. Note that the amplifier does not have an internal load, so you will have to connect an external cabinet or something like a load box if you want to use this function. And then we also have a master boost function that can be enabled via the foot switch. And this lets you boost the overall volume of the amp for guitar solos and stuff like that. You can dial in the amount of boost through the master boost level control on the back. And next to that we have the two effect loops. It can be pretty handy and convenient to have two effect loops available. And the fact that you can program them independently on your foot switch is even more convenient. And then we have the two 9 volt DC power supply connectors that I mentioned earlier. Very sweet indeed. And on the right we have the MIDI in and outputs. And yes you can control the entire amp via MIDI as well. Or you can use the MIDI in to connect the foot switch. So that was the PV Invective 120, a truly impressive amplifier indeed, easily one of my favorite amplifiers. It just sounds so good and it has basically all the features that you would need for a modern amplifier. Okay, now let's check out the PV Invective MH. And this is basically the mini or baby version of the Invective. And this one obviously comes in a much smaller package. This 20 watt amplifier features two EL84s in the power section and three 12AX7s in the preamp section. Now this smaller amp obviously does not have all the features that this big brother has to offer because it would be physically impossible to include all of those options, but they did include as much as possible so it's still a pretty feature packed little amplifier indeed. Since it's only a 20 watt amplifier, it obviously has less headroom than the big 120 watt version, but that does mean that it's great for playing at home for practice or recording, which you can, by the way, do silently. So that's very cool indeed, since the amplifier features an internal load or an internal load box, so to speak. This amplifier features a clean and a lead channel, so it does not feature the crunch channel that the big one has. But the tight switch under the channel select switch does give you access to those crunch tones. This will give the lead channel less gain and just a more crunchy rhythm tone and a little bit more tightness overall. The clean channel only has a gain, a bass and a treble control. It may not seem like a lot, but I think it surely is enough to tweak the tones to your needs. And do keep in mind that the presence and resonance controls that this amplifier also has to offer can really help you to fine tune the sound even further. Let's take a listen to the clean channel right now. And for this, I'll be using my LTD Steff seven string baritone model, the purple one again with the Fishman, and I have the Laney Black Country Customs Secret Path Reverb pedal hooked up again on the same settings as before through the effects loop. Let's go ahead and take a listen to that right now. Enjoy.
Great, I loved those tones. There was a very small amount of compression and saturation going on, probably because of the hot pickups or the EL84 power tubes. There's a little bit less headroom on this amplifier, of course, but I do love what that does to my clean tones. It just makes them a little bit less sterile. Now let's check out the wonderful lead channel of this amplifier. Now there are two functions that I have not mentioned yet, and that is the built-in gate and boost. Both functions cannot be tweaked, so they have been preset by Misha to his desired sweet spot settings, and I must say that they sound great. Now let's check out some heavy riffs on this channel, and for this I will be using my ESP LTD NW44 Neil Westfall guitar with a bare knuckle aftermath pickup in the bridge. A very cool sounding pickup that I really love these days. A very great sounding guitar with a very huge, clear and sort of gnarly tone. Let's go ahead and take a listen right now. Wow, that sounded absolutely huge. I loved it, and I don't think that this amplifier sounds like a small amplifier at all. It was absolutely amazing. Let's also take a look at the back panel of this amplifier to find out which features we have there. On the left, we have a variable wattage control. This allows you to change the wattage from 20 to 5 and 1 watts. Very convenient if you don't want to disturb the neighbors at night, and you can also use this to kind of fine tune the power tube compression and distortion a little bit. Then we have another MSDI direct output and also a headphones output. The speaker defeat button lets you turn off the speaker outputs of the amp so that you can record silently and direct. A very handy and cool feature. So as I said before, this amp basically has an internal load box. And then we have the effect loop send and return and the foot switch controls. This amp also comes with a simple two button foot switch that you can use to switch channels or turn features on and off. And finally, all the way to the right, we even have a USB out so that you can record directly into your computer without having to use a recording interface. Well, I guess that's it. The PV Invective MH is also a very cool little amplifier with some huge tones in it. It's easily one of my favorite mini amplifiers for modern metal, that's for sure. Overall, I really like these PV Invective amplifiers. They sound really good, they look very cool and unique, and they just have all the features and functions that you would need for a good recording or live gig. There really aren't any amps out there quite like these, so I like them a lot, and they get some big thumbs up from me. And that's all for this video. Please let me know in the comments down below what your thoughts are about these amplifiers. What did you think of the sound and features of these amplifiers? And if you had to choose one of these, which one would you pick and why? Also be sure to hit that like button if you enjoyed this video and hit subscribe along with the bell if you haven't already. And you can also follow Sonic Drive Studio on Facebook and Instagram and also on Twitter since recently. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you very soon. Cheers. Yeah.